Hi everybody, in this video this will be a continuation for the attack animations that we're going to add to our third person character uh, player movement. In the previous video we set up these two montages. Uh, this is the uh, heavy and this is the light attack montage. And then we also went into our character blueprint and set up our inputs. Uh, key press 1 for light attack, key press 2 for heavy attack. And then we added a couple of variables, is light attacking, is heavy attacking, and set that up. So now we're going to move into our animation blueprint. So there's our animation blueprint. This is the one that has our locomotion and our state machine. And then also has our event graph that has the is and air and speed. So here's where we're going to add the uh, inputs and connections so that we're going to play back the montages of light and heavy attacking. Uh, and connect them up to the key press of one or two. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get a reference to those two variables that we created in the last video. Um, so if I, let's see, let's minimize this, go back into our character blueprint. We want to get a reference to the is light attacking or is heavy attacking uh, so that we can drive them in our animation blueprint. So from the git, try git pawn owner, I'm going to drag out and I want to cast to that player character. So I'm going to drag out and I'm going to choose cast to third person player character BP. Okay. All right, so what is going to drive this is actually going to be the chain of command line we already got. So from this event blueprint update animation is valid, is an air set, set speed. Then after that set speed, I want to check to see uh, if I can cast the player character so I'm going to drag the set speed uh, execute to the input execute of the cast third person character. And uh, I don't particularly like the overlapping of lines, so if you don't like those either, you can double click on a wire and move that down. I'm going to double click on another one right here, move that over here, just so I don't have any kind of overlap of the wires. Uh, but that's from the try get pawn honor to a cast to third person character. All right, so we need to cast to see if we can get to the light tacking uh, or heavy attacking. Okay, so the next thing we're going to set up is a custom event within the animation graph here uh, that is going to then play the light attack animation montage or the heavy attack animation montage. So in the blank area down here, I'm going to right click and do custom event, add custom event, and then we'll just call this one light attack. This is a local custom event, so it can be called something similar to what we did earlier. And um, so then we're going to add a montage. So we want to play a montage. So from light attack, we're going to drag out and choose play montage. Montage play, actually not play montage, montage play. Okay, montage play. And then in the montage to play, we're going to drag out and we're going to choose third person player light attack. There you go. All right, so underneath that, we're going to create another custom event, custom event. And we're going to call that one heavy, heavy attack. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing drag out and we're going to say montage play. And we're going to add the third person player heavy attack montage. Okay, we can compile and save. We shouldn't have any uh, errors. All right, so back up here in the cast of player, third person player, we're actually going to have two actions that need to kind of coincide at the same time. So we're going to create branches and kind of a loop structure that can go back and forth and switch between two. Uh, there are other ways we can do this, but this is a simple way to get this set up. So we can do cast, or from the cast to third person character, we're going to drag out. And actually from the uh, as third person player character. Oh, we're going to drag out and choose uh, get uh, is light attacking. There you go. So get is light attacking. And we're going to promote this to a local variable so we can use this within this animation blueprint. So we do that by right clicking on the is light attacking and choosing promote to variable. And I'm just going to keep the same name is light attacking. There you go. 
All right, so we're going to create a couple branches here from the cast the third person character. We're going to drag out and we'll do one branch. We'll pull this up, maybe we'll pull these down some. Actually, that one's going to go right there. All right, so this first branch, we need the condition. Let's move everything over some more. The condition of the get light attacking, so we're going to drag that into the condition. This also goes to set is light attacking. So if is light attacking, then we're going to choose set light attacking. They're going to drag true from the branch to the set is light attacking. And then uh, we need another branch here. So the secondary branch is then to say, well, if that is true, uh, we're going to connect the is light attacking to the second branch's condition. And if light attacking is true, then uh, play that light attack. So light attack, light attack function. So and that is this one right here. So if light attacking button is pressed and that's true, then come play this montage that is going to be associated with light attacking. So that'll work for one of them, but we want to get both uh, attacks working at the same time. So if we compile and save, that's all running well. So we want to get the heavy attack and working as well. So we're going to drag out from our cast as a third person player character again and drag down and we're going to say is heavy attacking. We're going to do is get, get is heavy attacking. We want to promote this to a variable just like we did earlier. So I'm going to drag out, whoop, not drag out, right click and choose promote to variable and hit enter. We'll just save that as the same value. And this one we're going to create uh, two more branches. So we're going to uh, drag out from the is heavy attacking, get is heavy attacking, and we'll type in branch here. And then this branch is going to get connected to uh, the true of the first set is heavy attacking. Once again, don't like overlapping lines, so we can come in here and add an extra point there so that we don't have overlapping lines. Okay, I'm going to need to move this over here a little bit more. I'm going to try to put it right there. So from the is heavy attacking, after we set is heavy attacking from the first branch, then we're going to add a second branch. And we're going to connect the is heavy attacking from the set to the condition of the second branch. And then from the true, we're going to call our heavy attack function, which will then play our heavy attack montage. Okay, We're almost done. Uh, we can compile and save. That'll work, but we're not able to kind of loop back and forth between these. So we need to connect up our branches a little more. So the first connection is going to be from the first branch of is light attacking. If I wanted to move this one up to make sure I know that that is light attacking. Uh, this one appears the is light attacking first branch. I'm going to connect the faults of that one to the true of the first branch of is heavy attacking. So that way it'll connect it up. The second branch, if I'm not is light attacking, then I want to check to see is if I'm heavy attacking. So I'm going to click the faults from the second branch of is light attacking and drag that to the uh, executable of the first branch of is heavy attacking. There we go. We can add some points in here, make it easier so hopefully it don't overlap too much. You're going to have a little bit of overlap, but it's all right. And the last one, is we're going to take the second branch of is heavy attacking, the false, and then go back and check if is light attacking happening. And we can create a, a second icon or note there, so that way we have a little bit less overlap than what's required. So let's compile and save. And that should be everything to get our attacks running. Okay, so we've added, added to our uh, animation blueprint uh, that's everything for the event graph. We need to go back up and go to our anim graph and add our slots uh, to this as well. So instead of locomotion directly to output, we have to give the option to look for those two montages and we're doing that with these additional slots that we created. So I'm going to drag out from locomotion and we're going to add a slot default default slot. Go. And with that default slot selected, I'm going to go to the slot name and choose light attacking slot. There you go, drag that over. 
And then from slot light attack, I'm going to drag out from that. And then we're going to do uh, slot default slot again. And we're going to add our heavy attack slot. And then we're going to connect that up to the output. All right, so let's compile and save. And let's go test this out. So if I click X. All right, so when we play, we still have our character movement. So if I walk and run around, my jump still works. But now if I hit the one key, I have the light attack. If I can hit the one key again, it'll continue to have that light attack happening. If I hit the two key, there's my heavy attack. So much more dramatic of a prose, my animation. So and I can go back and hit one and two in any combination and it'll still work over and over again with each other. So that's how we can add actions other than jump to a third person character motion. So any other kind of secondary actions, a kick, a uh, death, a stun, it can always be added in that same exact setup there. So I can have a key press for one for light attack, key press for two for heavy attack. Any other actions I can add other key presses for those as well. So to wrap up this video on how to add attack animations to our third person character uh, setup in Unreal.